since uh, the next session, there is another session on religion and human rights uh, from 11.30 to 1 p.m. Um, here, same place here, I will, uh, I will present, uh, so the presentation done by Sinisha and myself, I will present in the next session. So we have a little bit more time now. Probably we have a lot of time because if one presenter is not showing up, so we have time to discuss more. Anyway, I would say 20 minutes for each presentation, 20, 22. Uh, and then the discussion will be at the end of the three or four presentations. So the first presenter is uh, Jim Richardson with a paper on religious freedom, politics and human rights as Zionist cases involving the Church of the Almighty God. In the preparation of this uh, research, Massimo Introvigne from Cesnur, Italy, and uh, Rosita Sciorite uh, from the International Observatory of Refugees have been involved, so this is, uh, they will participate in the discussion, I think, later. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, I handed out a sheet. Uh, if you don't have this, my friend at the back has some. Uh, it's too big for a PowerPoint. I summarized it in the PowerPoint, so hopefully that will be of interest. I also would call your attention to the fact that my email address is here. If anyone wants this presentation, and they might, if they're interested in this topic, because the presentation has a number of links in it to other information. So if you do want that information later, please email me and I will send you the presentation. Uh, here's a general outline of the presentation. I'm going to do a bit of an overview about asylum seekers and why there's so many. I'm going to use the United States uh, laws about this as kind of a typical example for Western countries. Uh, in the book that we're thinking of doing, uh, we'll of course talk about any differences in these laws uh, that might be of import. Then we're going to talk about the situation in China for religious minorities, particularly the Church of the Almighty God. And uh, then we'll talk about the asylum seeking results that this particular group has had. Uh, in terms of the contemporary refugee situation, it's uh, pretty grim out there in some parts of the world, as I'm sure you know if you pay any attention at all. Uh, we have lots of pressures on religious freedom and on human rights, civil rights in general. Some of the greatest offenders are China and Russia right now, but that is not to say there are not other offenders in various parts of the world, as I'm sure you know. Uh, this situation has led to many uh, people seeking, uh, becoming refugees and seeking asylum in various countries. And today, as I said, we're going to focus on China and the Church of the Almighty God. Uh, the United Nations High Commissioner on Refugees for refugees was established in 1950 after World War II, working on refugee problems around the world. And it's, according to their latest reports, an average of one million people per year seek asylum status in various countries. And in 2017, there were 3.1 million people awaiting decisions who had sought asylum in various Western countries. And that's a link that has a lot of the information if you want it. Uh, here's the United States statement. Uh, you might skim it quickly uh, to get a, the gist of what is required if you, or the definition of a refugee in the United States law. You will notice that race, religion, nationality, membership, and a particular social group or political opinion is, uh, those are explicitly listed in the law. Here are the elements you have to achieve if you're seeking asylum. Uh, a well-founded fear of persecution, uh, or that he, she has suffered uh, past persecution, race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, was or will be if removed the central reason for the persecution, and if the above criteria demonstrate, are demonstrated, then asylum should be granted in an exercise of discretion. That's from the United States statute. 
the historical assessment for asylum cases in the United States is rather interesting. Back in 1997, believe it or not, uh, a Scientologist from Germany was granted asylum status in the United States on the grounds that they were being persecuted in Germany. You know, as you might imagine, that caused a bit of a stir. Uh, some folks in Germany didn't like that at all. Uh, in the 90s and uh, earlier 2000, there were a number of asylum cases. I participated in some of them uh, as an expert witness. Uh, the Amish from France were seeking asylum. That is a particular group that the French government decided was uh, not wanted in France. And there's a lot of history there if you're interested. I can refer you to some writings that Massimo has done and that I've done. Uh, the Falun Gong also were seeking uh, asylum status from China during this time period. And there was an interesting differentiation in the results of those efforts. The Amish were generally not successful, even though we thought they had very good cases, and Falun Gong often were successful in getting asylum in the United States. I don't have data about those two countries and other those two asylum seeking uh, situations in other nations, uh, perhaps they can be gathered at some point. The situation in China for religious minorities, as you may know, uh, the word normal religion appears in the Chinese uh, constitution. And if you're not a normal religion, one of the four that are listed, uh, and, and therefore willing to uh, be involved in state control of your religion, and you can suffer greatly, uh, particularly if you're classified as a Xin Chao uh, or an evil cult. That is a term that has been used since the Ming Dynasty to refer to heterodox teachings, teachings not approved by the government. It's interesting to note that Christianity was so classified in 1725 and was only taken off the list in 1842 because of strong Western military presence. Uh, all the groups designated uh, since 1997 under provisions of a, a law, Article 300. You might want to skim this and notice a few ambiguities, uh, subtleties, a lot of discretion involved in how these groups are defined. Uh, basically, any group can be defined as in Chow with uh, impunity by local or national authorities. I'll give you a moment to read those. And again, there's a link there that has the uh, entire statute in detail if you want. This kind of language in the law is, uh, to put it mildly, <coughs> ambiguous and so to bring uh, discretion and abuse. <coughs> The Church of the Almighty God has been so classified since 1995 and has become a major focus for Chinese authorities since then. Uh, the major focus in terms of Western interest uh, a decade or so ago was on the Falun Gong. And as you may know, there's been a large literature developed in that area about what happened with the Falun Gong who were imprisoned by the thousands uh, and many died in prison. And there's all kinds of rumors about organ transplants and whatnot that uh, seem to have some credence. Uh, this particular group has experienced phenomenal growth. The, the authorities themselves estimate four million members in China, although it's impossible to say how many members of the Church of the Almighty God there are, but thousands of them have been arrested and imprisoned, subject to re-education uh, camps and tortured. And there have been, uh, as with the Falun Gong, some suspicious deaths that have occurred. Uh, Freedom House, an NGO that some of you may be aware of, says that 80% of those arrested under Article 300 between 2014 and 2016 were TAG members. Uh, and this repression has led to thousands of them uh, seeking, leaving China and seeking asylum in other countries. Uh, here, is, here are some links and uh, some brief quotes from international organizations, including the United States State Department report about the treatment of the 
Church of the Almighty God and uh, other groups, but that's the focus of this particular presentation. Okay, now uh, I handed out this sheet to kind of help you, but I try to summarize some of the key facts on that sheet in this particular slide. Over 5,500 members of the Church of Almighty God have gone in silence in nearly two dozen countries as of June this year. The largest numbers on list there, Korea, the United States, Italy, Spain, France, Japan, Germany. Uh, less than 10% have been granted asylum so far, however, uh, and 1,968 have been rejected, formally rejected, 501 received deportation orders, but interestingly, very few have been deported. And there's a whole story there we could get into, and Massimo and Rosita know a lot of details about various countries they visited, and perhaps in the question and answer session, uh, we can deal with some of those questions. The success rate has increased slightly in recent months, in part because some scholars, including uh, Massimo and myself and Rosita, and others have gotten involved in some of these cases, filing expert witness statements, uh, trying to assist in the claims being made by the asylum seekers. The success rates vary greatly by country, and it's interesting to note that the largest number in total absolute number is Canada, followed by Italy, then Germany, and New Zealand. Then the next point talks about percentages. New Zealand leads with 85% of the asylum seekers have been granted asylum. But there's some very low percentages countries, such as Japan, South Korea, Spain, and as of this moment, the United States has granted less than 2% of the asylum claims from the Church of the Almighty God. Uh, here's where, hopefully, in our future writings, we will be pulling some theories in. This is purely a descriptive uh, treatment, if you please. Uh, but we need some kind of explanation about why these differences are occurring. Here's the rejections and departure orders and the deportations. There, as I said, there have been 1,968 formal rejections, and here they are by country. Some of the same countries that have granted some significant asylum claims have also rejected asylum, such as Germany. Uh, however, the actual departure orders are very few so far, 501, and uh, only nine have actually been deported uh, that we're aware of. Switzerland and Canada with three each, Germany two, and Sweden one. So there's great disparity here that requires some explanation that we're trying to ascertain and hopefully we can get into some discussion of that in, uh, after the rest of the papers are presented. Here are questions that I raised. Uh, why are there such huge differences by country? Some of them are fairly easy to explain because of political pressure from China. China does not want the silent granted to any of these Church of the Almighty God members. It's an embarrassment for China to have that happen. And it's the same kind of pressure that they brought to bear in the Falun Gong cases of a decade or so ago, and are still coming and bringing to bear. But it's interesting to note, as I said, there have been actual few rejections and even fewer deportations. So that raises a lot of interesting questions about why this is happening. All these cases, many of these cases are just kind of sitting there waiting for some kind of adjudication. And even if they're adjudicated, then the claimant may not be deported. Uh, there's some steps they can take, they can, they can appeal, and then apparently there's considerable discretion in the authorities as to when they're actually deported. And trying to explain and understand all those differences by country will be an immense task for those of us who are working in this area. I'm very curious about what's happening in the United States, as you might guess, since I'm from the United States. Uh, over a thousand cases of asylum claims in the United States, but a low number of decisions, one way or the other, 
and virtually no, I think there's been only one deportation. So what are the reasons for these rejections is, is the question we would pose and ask you for any thoughts you might have on the matter. Uh, here's an overall assessment of the situation. There's a general negative attitude. Uh, the CAG members are accused of serious crimes by Chinese authorities just because they're members of this particular group. Most countries require some evidence that an individual member has been personally persecuted, although that's not the legal standard. A well-founded fear of persecution is the standard. Uh, the fact that many CAG members have been able to avoid persecution is held out as proof that they're not being persecuted. Uh, and then sometimes they can obtain passports. You have to have a passport to leave China. How can they do that if they're a member of a group that is being persecuted? It's a good question that the authorities always focus on. And then we have a lot of members of this particular group who cannot explain their theology. And again, that's not supposed to be the standard but decision makers in various countries are sometimes applying that as a standard. If you can't explain the theology of your group, you must not really be a member of the group there, assuming. And these, these uh, particular elements are taken from a paper Rosita has presented, and I give a citation here. It's available on the Cessna website if you want to read it. Uh, reasons for rejection. Uh, Christina Calvena in Italy has written a paper that's also available on the CESDA website uh, talking about what has happened in Italy, the experiences there, and what the authorities are, how they're deciding. It talks about contradictions in, between the application and the stories told in interviews, uh, applicant stories not jiving with information of what's called a country of origin information. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a source that a lot of countries rely on and the Chinese authorities have done their best to uh, make sure their perspective is presented in this set of information and data about China. And some countries have relied on that and only are now becoming aware of the fact that scholars are in strong disagreement with some of the information China is putting out about the Church of the Almighty God. So here are my conclusions. Uh, there's considerable animus that seems to even be increasing in some areas toward refugees and asylum seekers. The political climate for refugees is very dim, as you know. And certainly what's happening in America is not helping with that situation. Um, there are increased problems with people seeking asylum. Uh, CAG members have managed to to flee China in large numbers. They have managed to get passports. There's interesting issues to discuss about how that's occurred. Uh, you sometimes get the impression that the Chinese society is totally organized and if you're a member of this particular group that, that you're on a list and you can't do anything except be arrested. And that turns out not to be the case in part because of a large amount of corruption that's available our CAG members have taken uh, opportunities, taken advantage of opportunities to literally bribe officials to get documents they need to leave. Uh, the success rates have varied greatly, but they are improving in recent days, in recent months, because of the intervention of four scholars. Uh, so that with that, I'll stop. I think I've used my 20 minutes yep. probably. Thank you. And, uh, that's the next presentation.